Okay, Countdown to the Geek Cast, this is Retro Ray. This interview is with Chris Estrada, stand-up comedian and actor from This Fool, with co-host David Lozano from Star Wars Stuff Podcast. Enjoy. All right, Countdown to the Geek Cast, we got an awesome guest for today. We also got a co-host from Star Wars Stuff Podcast who will be joining us for this interview. We've got Chris Estrada. If you don't know who he is, he is from This Fool, from Hulu Show, but he's also a stand-up comedian as well. He was in San Antonio this weekend. Got to catch his show. Freaking hilarious. If you haven't watched it, you know, watched him stand up, definitely you want to go. If you haven't watched This Fool, you got to catch it. Season two is coming out as well. So we're going to wait no longer. We're going to bring in Chris join us for this interview how's it going chris what's up ray what's up david how are you guys doing good Pretty good good sir yeah thank you guys for having me really appreciate it oh, thank dude. you thank you for taking the time man you're a busy yeah, man no it's all good i'm, I'm ready to keep <laughs> out nice so the first question i got for you is it's i'm like i said you and frankie worked together before uh doing his videos that he does for cholo fit yeah well, so, yeah uh i've been in two of them he asked yeah. me to be in two of them but uh cholo fit is a character like it's a character creeper is a character he created i yeah, had nothing to do with it but he's a friend of mine's yeah and he he asked me to be in two videos that's pretty cool so so you pretty much knew him stand-up comedy and worked together yeah. before working on uh this fool yeah i met him geez man maybe like I almost want to say like seven years ago. I met him about seven years ago in Los Angeles doing stand-up comedy. He 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 started stand-up comedy in San Francisco, and he moved down to LA. And that's how we met doing stand-up comedy in Los Angeles. And you know, Frankie's a really nice guy and really supportive guy. And you know, aside from being a really good stand-up comic himself and performer. He, he just really loves stand-up comedy. So when he saw me, he was really nice and encouraging and uh, took me out on the road. Uh, asked if I wanted to go open for him. So I opened for him a few times on the road throughout the years. And just a really sweet, encouraging guy and super talented as well. Sweet. So with that, um, how did you create this fool, you and Pat and Matt? How did y'all come up with this show? Well... The way it started, it started about almost five years ago in like late 2018. Um, so the guys I co-created the show with, uh, their names are Jake Weissman, Matt Ingebretson, and Pat Bishop. And a few years ago, they had their own show on Comedy Central called Corporate. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Corporate was a really funny, dark show. It was like a workplace sitcom. Like the way they described the show was The Office Meets American Cycle. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And, yeah. Or like the office directed by David Fincher, and um, they were just really cool guys, and they were also stand-up comedians. Um, Pat Bishop, who was the director of the show, was was not doing stand-up anymore, but Jake Weissman and Matt Engelbretson were. And just how I met Frankie, I met them doing stand-up comedy in the Los Angeles comedy scene, particularly the, the Los Angeles alternative comedy scene, the more independent comedy scene, and I met them doing that. And they, really nice guys, I always looked up to them. And they started a few years before me, like five to six years before me. So they hit me up out of the blue one day and said, hey, we really like your stand-up comedy. We like what you talk about. Uh, we like, at the time, I in my stand-up comedy, I was, I was talking, I was making jokes a little bit more about where I grew up. I don't do that as much anymore, but I was kind of talking about my life in a particular way. And then they said, you know, we really like that you talk about where you grew up. We're like, you know, we're like three white dudes and we don't know that world, but you make it really funny and understandable to us. So they were like, we should make a show that re that revolves around that. So then they said, try to come up with an idea. And then I came up with the idea of my character working at a, at a place called Hugs Not Thugs, which is a gang rehabilitation center. <laughs> I thought it would be pretty interesting and subversive. And they told me, this is a really cool idea. Uh, let's fill in the world. Like, we don't want to make a workplace sitcom. So let's make it a place where you also, 
where we see this character's life. Like, what's his home life like? What's his dating life like, you know? So we're not married to just have being at work all the time. Yeah. So that's how we created the show. It's freaking hilarious. Dude. I mean, okay, being Hispanic, mm. growing up, you know, South Side, West Side. Yeah. It's so hilarious. Like, the jokes you do, the the girlfriend, the mm. tias, <laughs> it, it, everything in general. I mean, how much of that character is actually you? I mean, are you actually having to really change anything or is it just pretty much you being yourself um i inform it a little bit you know i i don't know that it's completely me uh it there's aspects of me in there for sure like like when you see me in the show wearing like punk band t-shirts like bad brains or the clash or you know um shirts like that or los crudos uh those are all punk bands like if, when you see me wearing those shirts on the tv show that's that's really a reflection of who i am and though there's shirts that I own or bands I like that I told the costume designer, hey, can you buy shirts by this these bands? And so stuff like that. Uh, there's elements of the show that really are that are really based on my life. For example, I never worked at a place at, at a non I never worked at a nonprofit that that's a gang rehabilitation program. But I did live in South Central and uh, and I lived in Inglewood in Los Angeles. And, you know, it's kind of a tough neighborhood and it's like mostly black and Latino and it's like a working class neighborhood. And I also, you know, uh, throughout my 20s, I kind of on and off lived with my mom and I was the only man in the house. So I lived with my mom, my grandma, my sisters, my aunt. So that kind of thing you see in the house is very familiar. And the character Luis is based off of some of my cousins. One of my cousins who actually lives in San Antonio, who was at the show last night. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, he, he him and, a, and another cousin really informed that character. And um, and he's named after a cousin that I have, uh, one of my other cousins. And so, yeah, a lot of it is really, yeah, kind of informed by me. And it's true. I mean, the stuff that you do do, and it's true because we have stuff like that here in San Antonio where you see that when you're going up on the south side or the west side where they have those community centers and they do stuff like that. Um, that's what I guess, or I feel like I relate so much with the show, just the little things like, mm. yeah, you know, us, you know, Hispanics living with our moms, you know, stuff like yeah. that. And then it's just, it plays out so well, you know? So how did you come up? Did, was it your idea to cast, um, uh, what's, uh, what's the name to be on the show as well with you? Or was that something that was done separate? Oh, Frankie. Frankie yeah. Yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I'll be honest, at first, we, I think we imagined the character in a different way. Like we imagined a really, like a tall, big guy that's super buff with blasted out in tattoos. And what we found is there, those are, there are actors who are like that, who come from that world. But what we found is that they weren't, while they were talented actors, a lot of them didn't have uh, timing, like comedic timing. Yeah. And a lot of them weren't funny. So when they read the jokes, it felt more threatening and you know yeah. so then um we all knew frankie me and the co-creators of the show knew frankie and we thought you know what we should ask frankie to audition because he might be able to bring something interesting to it and what we what we found out was when we saw his audition is that he he felt more human he actually felt more like a real life version of a guy yeah in that like you know not all Former gang members or gang members are tall, buff guys. Some of them are short, chubby guys. Some of them are overweight. Some of them are skinny. Some of them are buff. Like, he just really kind of represented a real look. Yeah. Like, he represented somebody that looked very human. And and also, um, it just worked out really funny because I, I'm taller than him. <laughs> and we just thought, like, that's kind of a funny idea. And the funny thing is, is in real life, my cousins who were gang members who, you know, have, you know, moved on with their lives now. But at some point I did get taller than them. And <laughs> so we actually kind of thought like, you know, comedically, that's really funny. And the thing that Frankie brought to it was like a vulnerability. Like he knows how to be tough, but he also knows how to be very funny and vulnerable. And he feels very human. Yeah. So that's really what he brought to it. And he brought a real life. He just, it felt very human. The connection with you two guys is just phenomenal. I mean, y'all literally play off each other so well. 
Oh, dude, that's really because, like, man, after going on the road with him a few times, like, we just, we're friends, so we joke around a lot, and, you know, I, I really love the guy, and I do, I know he loves me, and, you know, we're a family in the way that, like, we love each other, we get on each other's nerves sometimes, and, you know, I, I think it really resonates. Like, I that's the, the feedback I've gotten is that we have, like, good chemistry and we bounce off of each other a lot. Because the way we fuck around, like, when we were on the road together, we would fuck around a lot. Like, I, <laughs> uh, I would make fun of him. He would make fun of me. We'd talk shit to each other. So I think it really feels that way on the show. I really get a feel, like, between the two of you guys, a Tommy Chong feel, Cheech and Chong, mm-hmm. the two of you bickering at each other back and forth. And stuff yeah. like that. I really get that. And it brings back that homage to that to an extent. But also, too, yeah. with you two, um, like I said, for me, like just watching it overall, like how you two sometimes try to sign up to him and he comes back to you and you kind of like flinch back and stuff. And it's hilarious yeah. at that aspect when you do two do that. Yeah. But I also wanted to show that we that I that my character hits him back. Yeah. Like my character punches him. Yeah. My character like my character is like Ner- he, he has nervous guy energy yeah. but he, but it's also the dynamic that his cousin came back after 10 years and now he stands up to him like they fight yeah. you know they're not he's not scared to punch him or wrestle with him or put him in a head like they fuck each other up you know <laughs> and and it's not like a bullying thing it's they both are constantly like shoving and but punching each other yeah. so it's really a lot of that and making sure that like my character doesn't feel like a victim because it'd be kind of weird if for a grown ass man to not want to fight back, you know? <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of that flinching is, I think is a really funny thing to just show that my character maybe is a little more nervous guy energy or has anxiety. Yeah. And that's the thing too, with you and the cast that y'all got is phenomenal as well, you know, and the guy who was running hugs for thugs. Oh yeah. Uh, Michael Imperioli. Uh, from the Sopranos. Dude, how was it when y'all got him? Was that, you know... Dude, amazing. It was... The way that happened was they wanted us to offer that role to someone. And we... I went out for a walk with a friend one night over in in LA and my buddy, we were walking around and I go, they want us to offer it to someone. Who can we offer it to? I have no idea. And we were naming names. And he told me, he goes, you should offer it to Michael Imperioli. This is a friend who has nothing to do with our show. And I said, dude, there's no way he would ever do it. There's no way. And he goes, you never know. He might. So I brought it up to my co-creators, my partners, my writing partners. And they said, you know what? Let's try it. And we sent them the script. And he really loved it. And he, I thought we were going to probably not hear back or, you know, we'd hear back within a week. And it would be the answer would be he's not interested. He got back to us a week later and was like, he really likes it. And he'd love to meet with you guys on over Zoom. And he was in New York and we met with him over Zoom and he asked us questions and he wanted to know more about the character. And I told him that the character of uh, Minister Leonard Payne is even though he's the only white guy in the show, he's not a buffoon. Yeah. Like he's. He fits into the world. And, you know, I think a lot of times when you in shows that it's mostly a minority cast, when there's a white character in there, they're kind of meant to come off as like condescending liberals or like buffoonish people. And I wasn't really interested in that. I wanted everybody to be flawed on the show. Everybody's flawed. Everybody's human. Everybody everybody's an idiot and everybody's a good person at the same time. Like everybody's trying to do their best and failing. Yeah. And, and um, he was really interested in that. And I told them that the character kind of represented an old school, angry liberal. And he really liked that. I go, it's like a liberal guy, like a Bernie Sanders type of guy, but he's tough. And he's not, you know, he's not a wimp. He's like old school. He's like those old, old school Vietnam hippie vets, you know? It's like they're passionate, they have opinions, they'll fucking fight with you on the streets, but they're liberals, you know? Yeah. And you really like that. And dude, I'm a big Sopranos fan. Huge, huge Same Sopranos here. fan. Same here. Yeah. And I love the other stuff he's done. He wrote the movie Summer of Sam that Spike Lee directed. And he's been on tons of other things. And 
I really admire his work. He also has a band. He has a rock band that you guys should check out called Zopa. Oh, nice. And they're really good at Z-O-P-A. And um, yeah, it was amazing to work with him. You know what? Not only was it amazing to work with him, it was intimidating. That's what I was going to ask. Was it? Did you geek out when you saw him on set the first day? I geeked out, man. I tried not to. I mean, I try to play cool. <laughs> and I tried not to ask questions about the Sopranos because... <laughs> Uh, he's probably tired of it. And at the time, he was hosting a podcast with Steve Sharippa called Talking Sopranos. Yeah. So I just thought, the last thing this fool wants to do is talk about the Sopranos. <laughs> on set, you know? That is pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, and then the thing is, like, too, I like how you incorporated some of the whole stripper thing into the to the show as well. Like, he mentioned something about a stripper. Thing. Yeah. That was so hilarious. We wanted to incorporate that this guy, before he became a, un a Unitarian minister, he he was he had all kinds of jobs, like he used to, uh, and he was a shady guy. Yeah, you know. So yeah, there's an episode where he goes where he talks about how he used to manage a strip club. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we tried to incorporate, and that's actually based off of a friend of mine's. I have a friend. His name is Mike, and he's um. He's a good friend of mine. He he manages a strip club in LA. So that's that's my little my little homage to my friend Mike. That's freaking cool, dude. I mean, it falls all in the play. I, I'm looking Thanks, forward man. to season two. I mean, did what were you? So when it finished, I know you have to wait and you know to see you know if they're going to pick yeah. you up. When you got the news, what were you, what were y'all guys thinking? Did you already have a plan what the next season is going to be, or did you actually? have to wait before y'all can even start working an idea what season two is going to continue on about. You know what's funny, man? It, when we got it, these companies, like these big corporations like Hulu and all these companies, they have so much money that it's very weird what happens. They had us after season, after season two came out a few months, after season one came out a few months, like maybe two, three months later, they had to start the writing room. Now, just because they have you start the writing room doesn't mean they green light you. They could pay you and see all the scripts and this, and they have so much money that they can decide, nah, we're good. But so, but what was crazy is halfway during the room, they green lit us. So we were already coming up with stories before we started the room and before they started, um, before they, before they green lit us for a second season. But yeah, second season is gonna come out this year, July twenty eighth. Oh, nice! After my birthday, I can't wait. That's gonna be freaking awesome. Yeah. Benji, watching that and stuff. Thanks, man. I'm really excited. I, I I'm really excited for the second season. I I'm really proud of it. I like the cameo too. Who you got to play the rich couple? That was freaking. Oh, Fred Armisen and Eliza Coop from yeah. How did you pull that out? Getting him to come on the show for that. You know, he's an executive producer on the show. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, he, when we created the show, um, one of Jake and Jake Weissman and Pat Bishop's manager um, is at the is at the same management firm as Fred Armisen's manager, and they know each other. So she had an idea. She said, would you guys mind if I show this material to Fred Armisen's manager, see if Fred wants to be involved? Because at the time, he was producing a show called Los Espookies yeah. on um, HBO. Yeah. And um, he just said, yeah, he, he, we sent it to him and he said, oh, I think this is really cool and looks very interesting because we had a, we had like a treatment with photos and all kinds of conceptual stuff. And he said, I'd love to help out with this. And then um, he was very nice. He lended his time. He went with us to pitch meetings to sell the show. Oh, nice, dude. That's really yeah. awesome. So, so it was really helpful to have him there and to see that a big star like Fred Armisen was... Wow backing the project that is freaking awesome man. yeah so when we wrote that episode we thought of the billionaires because we wanted to have this <laughs> evil billionaires episode we asked him if he'd be in it and he said he said yes and then that woman who plays his wife her name is eliza koo she's a very talented oh, funny dude, actor hilarious and she killed it in that role dude she killed it yeah i was so, watching i couldn't stop laughing with the two dude especially when uh, they get in the truck at the end when he's in the truck with her. <laughs> when yeah. he, the way you wrote that into the script that the only way they would do the check if he would sleep with her. I was just, I was like, yeah, that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it didn't work out at the end. Yeah. 
funny. We reveal in the season finale that it didn't work out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I can't wait for the show. So now on GeekCast here, our podcast is we believe everyone has a geek side to themselves from yeah. comic books to movies to horror films. What is your geek love? What do you like to kill your time watching, reading? Oh, man. I love films. I I love films and I love filmmakers. I love the Coen brothers. Um, the way that we pitch the show, we pitch the show as Friday, but directed by the Coen brothers. Nice. I mean, it does get that feel. I do get that yeah. feel of Friday yeah. in there. Yeah. We wanted to direct. Yeah, we wanted to make it feel like Friday, but make it very cinematic and very offbeat the way a Coen brothers movie feels. Yeah. And you know, I love the Coen Brothers. I love movies like uh, Blood Simple, Miller's Crossing, Barton Fink, um, Raising Arizona is one of oh, my favorite dude, movies. That's priceless. Ra- oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Um, Hut Sucker's Proxy, Fargo. I mean, I just love the Coen Brothers. Love them. And then um, I, I just love movies. Coen Brothers, I love Terry Gilliam. Uh, he directed movies like Brazil, Time Bandits. Oh, yeah. Uh, 12 Monkeys, oh, dude. He, he used to be part of Monty Python, yeah. so he had a lot to do with like Holy Grail, Life of Brian, Meaning of Life. Um, I love old movies. I love uh, movies by, um, th- there's a writer, there's a writer from back in the day, he used to direct, he used to write screwball comedies in the 1940s. His name is Preston Sturges. One of my favorite films of all time is this movie called Sullivan's Travels. Oh. It's a, uh, I, I love that guy, but I also love like, you know what I'm really into too is old luchador movies from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Those kind of, those B movies of like El Santo, Mil Mascaras, Blue Demon. I love old luchador movies, really love that. Um, but I, just, I love films, man. I spent a lot of time watching films. The last movie that really blew me away was Triangle of Sadness. Mm, nice. so was, I can't, if you guys get a chance, check that out. Um, but also I love comic books. I, I love comic books. I, I put, I, when I was growing up, I used to read a lot of Marvel and DC and then I used to read Vertigo. If you, it's an imprint of DC, yeah. I used to read that a lot and I used to read dark horse comics, but as I've gotten older, I've kind of stepped away from some of the like superhero stuff and I read a lot of independent comic books. Um, there's a series called love and rockets by these two uh, Chicano Latino from Oxnard, California. They've been running this comic book since 1983. It's called Love and Rockets. It's my favorite series. Uh, it was a big inspiration for this full, big inspiration. And um, the two brothers, Jaime Hernandez and, uh, and um, uh, Jaime and Gilbert Hernandez. And, but I also love Daniel Klaus, if you guys know him. There's a movie based off of one of his comic books called Ghost World. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ghost yeah. World. There's another movie called Art School Confidential based off of his comics. I also love Robert Crumb, you know, the old school cartoonist Robert Crumb. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm a big, uh, I love music. I can put on, like, I love to buy vinyl records. Uh, nice. I love listening to vinyl, but I still buy CDs. I just, I love music, dude. I love punk music. I grew up being a uh, I grew up being a punk, and there's um there's like this there's this singer from this band called uh, Minor Threat and Fugazi. Yeah, I heard about them. Yeah, yeah. His name is Ian Mackay. He says a really interesting thing. He says, he, you know, he's an older dude now, and he says, I didn't grow out of punk. I grew up with punk, and uh, I feel the same way because I still listen to it, and I'm still excited about discovering new bands. But I just love music in general, man. I love heavy metal. I love jazz. Um, I love listening to Mexican music. I, yeah, I just uh, really love all that. Shit. That's just the three things: uh, music, uh, movies, and independent comic books. I geek out on. Nice. Yeah, I, I interviewed Colin Bunn just about a week ago, and he's the one that like Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. He's wrote a lot of horror type uh, comic stuff. To That's me, awesome. he's like to me, he's a Stephen King of um, comic world from the novel world. But yeah, he was cool. I mean, he's did the the six gun, oh, but yeah, cool. comic book stuff in general. I like you know I love artists, writers. That's why I 
I'm doing this podcast with kind of to the geek cast to bring because everybody has their geek and love and music, you yeah. know, you know, people who love Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor yeah. Who. So, you know, that's why I wanted to bring it in, especially with your your show. You know, we don't see very many Latino shows on TV, yeah. you know, and to Thanks, me, man. that was huge, man. I wanted to make sure that especially San Antonio, San Antonio has that Latin feel for everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and the dude. show that they brought you loved last night. I saw it. It was oh, dude, awesome. yeah, man. I you, I've gotten when the show came out, I got a shitload of messages from people from San Antonio, mm-hmm. uh, saying that the show, even though it takes place in LA, that they really relate to it because they said it reminds them of San Antonio. Yeah, and yeah, that really meant a lot. And um, it, it's really cool. Even performing here. I came during a little bit of a tough time. Luckily, people have been showing up, but there's this big event happening in San Antonio called Fiesta, <laughs> which you guys know all about. And yeah, I, was sure. just like, I told my agent, never book me during Fiesta again. I didn't <laughs> never, never do that. But luckily, a lot of people have been coming out. So, like I said, that's definitely, man. If I would have loved to have gotten into the show before to, you know, promote mm-hmm. you guys more. That you were coming out yeah but like i said i look forward to seeing more cool stuff from you thanks man um, i really appreciate it is there any other projects you got in the work as well right now that you're writing or you know we have um season two of this full we're editing it right now it comes out july 28th and right now i'm just working on stand-up i started as a stand-up comedy and a stand-up comedian so i'm just working on that trying to trying to really shape an hour and like work come up with new material all the time. So that's really what I'm working on right now. Sweet. That's freaking mm-hmm. awesome. Like yeah, so, that, guys. so Chris, uh, I wanted to ask you right quick, uh, who are your influences in stand-up? My influences? Man, I really love... Um, there's a guy named Colin Quinn I really like. Oh, um, okay. Really, yeah. really SNL cool alum, yeah. Yeah, uh, SNL alum. He has a great special called New York Story. If you guys get a chance, check that out. There was a guy back in the day named Greg Giraldo that I really liked a lot. He was a really funny comedian. He passed away like back in like 2013 or something, 2011, but really talented. Um, I really like him. There's another comedian named Maria Bamford. I really like, um, you know, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, uh, there's a Felipe Esparza. I really like Felipe Esparza a lot. Um, there's another guy named Patrice O'Neill that I really like. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of comedians, man. I um, I, I just love stand up. I love, I love the classics. I love Richard Pryor, George Carlin. Yeah. You know, um, uh, yeah. I was also going to ask you: uh, Do you have like a favorite podcast? Do you listen to podcasts at all? Uh, yeah, I listen to podcasts. Um, wh- what do I listen to? There's a. I did a podcast for this guy. Um, his name is Damian Abraham. He's in. A, he's in a band called Fucked Up. Uh, really cool hardcore band from Toronto, uh, Canada. And he has a podcast called Turn Out of Punk where he interviews people who, and, and he asks the people who were one time involved in punk and or, or still love it or in hat, or had their life changed by the genre. So he, that's a podcast I did that I really listened to a lot. Nice. Cool. Yeah. That's and also, cool. do you have a favorite place where to do stand up? You know, I love clubs. I love comedy clubs. Um, re- LA is my home, so I like playing. There's, there's really, there's some good clubs there. The Hollywood Improv is a really great place. The Comedy Store is a really great place. Uh, yeah, and then there's a lot of really great independent rooms all throughout Los Angeles that I really love. Nice. Mm-hmm. And oh. also, I'm a, I'm a Star Wars stuff podcast. Uh, founder and host um what are your thoughts on star wars you know i i i haven't unfortunately i haven't been caught up in the last few years so like that i i don't i don't know anything about the mandalorian i hear it's good um the last thing i saw that blew me away was rogue one yeah yeah really blew me away but i grew up um you know i was in high school when the second trilogy came out you Prequels, know, yeah, yeah. I was in high school when the second trilogy came out, but growing up, I was a big, big Star Wars fan. I mean, all of them. I mean, at New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi are really special films. Yeah. You know, I I really love them. 
especially Empire is really amazing. Empire Strikes Back is really blows me away. Um, I like that second trilogy. I thought was really good. And I just remember a, a, when I was in high school, a big, I had a, an N64 and the big game was, pod, do you guys remember that game Pod Chaser or? Yeah, Pod yeah. Racer. Yeah. Pod Racer. Pod Racer yeah. was a huge game at the time. Yeah. I couldn't, I would play that all the time. But yeah, I really, I love that. I love Star Wars. Uh, I, I'm not as big a fan as I used to be, or I, mm -hmm. you know what? I haven't caught up in a few years. I haven't had a lot of time to watch, but what I what I've seen growing up, I love. Yeah, right. yeah. So actually, right now in theaters, it's the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi, and wow. you can actually go see it right now. I saw it last night at uh, the Centicos Palladium, and nice. uh, yeah, it, it was a pretty cool experience to see it back on the big screen, and then with the new like an improved sound. You could hear things that you really never noticed before, like on VHS or on TV when they broadcast it. So if you're interested in that, it's it's playing around the clock in San Antonio. Nice, man. If, if I have time, I'll go check it out. Yeah. Cool. Well, well appreciate the time. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you, right? we can get you back on the show. Hopefully we can get maybe both of you guys, you and Frankie, when yep. season two comes out and yep. maybe either talk after the season and – talk about the episodes and stuff like that that would yeah. be great because yeah, i know you can't talk about too much about you know what's going to happen but yeah i love to talk about what happens after the season yeah well to, it, the only thing i can say it's a darker grittier season it's still very funny but it's just a little more darker and grittier nice yeah looking man, forward thank you guys, and yeah i'd love to do it again cool man appreciate it thank you very awesome. much sir cool thanks ray thanks right, david sir. see you guys thanks, chris stop recording check out this one real retro